actually I to. proving that this was the rear of Christ. Right, right, right. The man. He was called the one with the problem. And then he, then he learned a new thing. But you can't deny this. Yeah, he learned his, his, his I guess that yeah. revelation, the first one, when he went into Mount uh, Sinai or something, or Arabia. Mm -hmm. So help me understand this. Best I can tell. Well, no, he has to get the Netflix button on the TV. Oh, that's all he has to do. Okay. Okay. Zoe, you want your eraser over there? Oh, I got you, ma'am. I'll keep it over here for now. Okay. After Bible class, I do. Oh, tomorrow's a school day. Hey, Annie. Hello. How, how you got going on in that little rain coat there? Is it raining out there? It, it's a little wet. Glad you could make it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to watch the whole time. Yeah, the whole time? Yeah, three hour lunch. No, because I went in there for 30 a month. Like, I never heard from her. I was like, oh, well, okay. I'm going to earn some money to feed my cat for me because Annie's going to be gone on Thursday. And I'm going to be in Pensacola getting my kitchen finished. I might be here. So, would you feed my cat? I'll get it all ready for you. Just drop it and put it out in the porch. Huh? And if y'all could do Aubrey too. And I'll give y'all food over at your house to do it. Probably Aubrey. I'll probably feed Aubrey over there. Okay. The cat, all you have to do is drop it. I put it on a bowl on my porch. But what I'll do is I'll. Uh, I'll fix you a can or something for it. It's easy just to get in and out. You know what I'm saying? I'll be gone Thursday and Friday um, for sure. Because we're getting up to finish up the kitchen, so I have to get there. Good call, you, you don't mind. I mean, how much do you charge for feeding the animals? Do you have a certain feed? Oh, you've never done that before. Well, if we give her $10 an hour and it takes her five minutes, how much is that? <laughs> Like Johnny, negotiate, negotiate. Would that be 75 cents? Or Johnny, cents? negotiate. Come on, negotiate. <laughs> You're supposed to have a, a bad weather clause. If you have to do it in bad weather, you get extra. A hazardous pay clause. Come on, negotiate. Well, if we give her $60 an hour and it takes her a minute, is that a dollar? If OSHA comes by, which are they, they going to sue Johnny or me? <laughs> so I, Johnny can negotiate this deal up. Mickey, are the swaps just for the inside of the kitchen or the outside of the house or those all those uh, swaps? Oh back. no, that must be oh. something. That's something going on with me. I was just like, what color are you talking about? Yeah. I was like, what color are you choosing? Like, there's a lot. Of, there's even yellow in there. Like, Michelle what was like, I thought you were doing something uh, different. <laughs> no, I think I want to do the outside of my house gray. Grays are popular now. Bell gray with white trim. Sharp I bought a, I bought I agree, a new I agree. Uh, I agree. Jack, a, sport, a suit jacket for Nicole's wedding that fits me, and it's gray. You got the wedding all thing Yeah, you got all that. I got, I got, my, your I got the whole, the, the base, the vow part and all. That's simple. That's just, yeah. but I got, but my preaching to them, I haven't got all sorted out yet. <laughs> I got to come up with something. Oh, right. I, got I have question. some ideas. Just about, just some things the Bible says about it. And then, so I, do I need to call you know, somebody and tell them we're coming? So they some, something to that effect. Make sure it lasts more than a minute. Um, yeah. It needs to go. How long is the preaching part? A more than a minute. I'll take you <laughs> but I mean, the the not the vowels and the repeat after me, exactly. but the actual part where you help them, you know, get through the marriage and all. That's probably <laughs> vowels. Vowels. I didn't say vowels, did I? <laughs> I think you guys <laughs> said vowels. <laughs> yeah, the A E I O U. Right. Was that? Um, Wait, is it next weekend? The funeral was that Ark that was Sammy's first time he preached, or no? It was that guy that substituted. You're gonna miss You're gonna miss Said it was first time he. He had all these points, and he finished it in like five minutes. Oh, okay. Like that. Uh, are you going to Animal Kingdom? No, we're just doing Magic Kingdom and three days at Universal. Uh, I'm super excited. I like Magic Kingdom. Yeah, that's my. But they have a, it's a pretty straightforward deal. I sent her a copy of the vowels that I would intend to say, and the. I think the only kid that's going to. A couple other things, and she she didn't even she just said that's fine to me. 
Do you have the yeah, obey phrase in there? I, I, I got um, <laughs> submission, obey, <laughs> kneel down. Major stuff. Important stuff. All money goes in his account. <laughs> man makes all decisions. <laughs> right. He holds all the credit cards. No driving after 8 p.m. That's right. <laughs> all right, guys, y'all about ready? Is yeah. it six? Did yeah. you get all that? Nice. All right, let's go for it. All right, guys, we're taking a walk through the book of Acts, and we get stopped right in our tracks by uh, chapter two. If we don't talk about a 40 day period of time after Jesus Christ died on the cross and then ascended up. Okay? Now, during that 40 days, we're going to read about it right here. He did a particular thing. In the Gospels, it said many things were hid from his disciples. So they did not understand some things he said because it was hid from them. Now, we are after the cross. We are before the ascension. And we're going to start a two-part. I think it's going to wind up being a two-part discussion on what Jesus Christ taught these people. His guides. Remember we talked last time about after the ascension, these were the first Christians ever. That's that's a really intense thing. Okay, they had a lot to learn here. They had a lot to learn throughout here too. But this was the beginning of Christianity right here. With these these apostles, this started right here. Okay. So we're going to start in Luke 24. You're defining Christianity as just a, a person that believes that the man they hung on the Christ, the cross, was the Christ. A Christian, according to Acts, um, were people who believed that Jesus Christ was and is the Son of God. Okay. That is the, the, the term has been very bastardized over the years, and a lot of people call it this or call it that, but the Christians were first called that to Ephesus, and it was a derogatory Greek word. Um, the Roman emperor, here at the end of the Acts period, decided he needed to wipe it out. It was so intense, it was alarming. And a lot of religious leaders and the Roman emperor decided to exit out, to, to destroy it. Because they were afraid they would lose their, their power, their they tried very hard to do it, and they slaughtered most of these these people throughout here, the believers. Um, a lot of them got slaughtered, but but God's plan was not for Christianity to get burned away, and it kept spreading. Um, and ravenous wolves came in mm -hmm. and tried to ruin it. But Satan was not allowed to completely annihilate mm -hmm. Christianity. Now, this Roman emperor was a great antichrist. He's not the antichrist, but we have to talk about antichrist in the book of 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. And we have to talk about 1st and 2nd Peter. But we've got so much reading to go through tonight and then discuss. We might not get to 1st and 2nd Peter and John tonight. So that's why I say this is probably going to be a two-part discussion. Okay. It's extremely important subject matter. Because whatever Jesus Christ told these people right here, they were the only ones that knew it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Those were the only people that knew it. So it started to spread from the day of Pentecost right here. Mm -hmm. All, right. All right. That's really important. All right, we're in Luke 24, verse 44. Now this is Jesus Christ talking to his disciples. All right. These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. <clears throat> now, the law of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. We have a question. Did they understand everything about the scriptures at that moment? No, not until he opened their understanding. Well, it says he just did. He just opened their understanding. But do you think they still needed to read the scriptures and study what he had opened their eyes concerning? 
Well, it says that they might understand the that scriptures. that they might understand. So that could be that they might understand right now, or that they have a lot of understanding to right. go through. All right. Okay, so I'm not telling with that. I'm asking. All right, these are the important questions. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. So far, there's nothing said right now about Jesus Christ's blood shed for sins. Okay? And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Repentance, we know what repentance means. Do you know what remission means? Remission of sin. If you have cancer and it goes into remission, that's a good thing because it's not active anymore. Remission means to walk away from, for something to fall away, to, to, to go down in size, you know, to fall off, to turn away from, to change. All right. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send you promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Who can tell me real quick what that means? What was that? Holy oh, Ghost. That would be the Holy, the Holy Ghost. Ghost. Yeah. The, the Holy Ghost was part of this program. Mm -hmm. like, where they get, began, had the sign. They started having the sign gifts. And these are uh, <clears throat> and the first sign, the absolute first sign was. We'll read about it in Acts. Was the Holy Ghost coming on them, and it was very visible. It was a very physical manifestation, and everybody stopped and stared and tried to figure out what that was because they'd never seen anything like that before. All right? And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven, and they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. They were continually where? In the temple. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, that's going to get important here. Now let's turn to Isaiah 53. We're not going to read every prophecy of Christ in the Bible tonight. You should be familiar with Psalms, and we'll be reading Psalms quoted here in a little bit in the book of Acts. Isaiah 53, again. Yes. When he said that um, he would open their eyes earlier, you were asking that question. Do you think that meant that they, now that they knew about Jesus, that if they went back to the Old Testament and read, they would now insert or see the light of like Isaiah 53 that they wouldn't have seen before? I'm absolutely saying that that is a distinct possibility concerning some of the information that they got in their lifetime. They got a lot of information plenty of information to get started with in this period when he opened their eyes. But I don't believe that they went through life not having to read the scripture ever again. But I'm asking you that. Okay. All right. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Now, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Okay, it did not say the word blood there, but believe me, they beat him half to death. So, he was, he was abused, he was killed, and by these stripes we are healed. Okay. Now Peter didn't talk about a lot about that that part. 
in his first mm -hmm. in his first sermons, which we're going to read two very important, very famous sermons, Peter's first two. Okay. Mm -hmm. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Uh, yet he opened not his mouth. And uh, there we go. All right, now let's go to the beginning of Acts again. So, as the kind of the, the, the question you're pondering or proposing is, is did uh, like we understand it today, and like Paul preached, the blood, his shed blood is how our sins are atoned for. Or is the kind of the question you're proposing is, is that specifically or necessarily what he taught the twelve during that forty days? Is that kind of the I Big think he opened question. their eyes so they could certainly find it at least, and he might have talked to them about it. Mm -hmm. He might have talked to them about it a lot. I'm proposing a question. Sure. But he certainly, he certainly opened their eyes so that they would be blessed in the reading of the scripture from then on. Mm -hmm. He certainly did that. And you're, we're going to find out here in Acts that Peter had learned an awful lot in those 40 days. Mm -hmm. He was a man of authority. He spoke with authority after this, and, had, and we're going to talk about what he said. Okay. All right. We're going to start in Acts chapter 1. We'll start in verse 15. I hope you remember what we read last time. All right. What did Jesus Christ tell him to do when he ascended up? What, was, what did he tell him to do right after I ascend up? Go back to the... He said, go go wait for the, mm -hmm. when the Holy Ghost will come on you. Mm -hmm. You'll be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Okay. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of his disciples and said the number of names together were about 120. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost, by the mouth of David, spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. Now, Paul's about to stay in Psalms quite a bit, and he's obviously had his eyes opened in Psalms and learned a lot. Uh, Peter, you meant Peter. I mean Peter. Did I, what did I say? Paul. Oh, oh yeah, Peter. For he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the mist, and all his bowels gushed out. Remember he, when, he, when he was talking about David up there, talking about Psalms. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, inasmuch as that field is called in their proper tongue, a cell the mud, that is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his bishopric let another take. Peter knows a lot about Psalms at this point. Okay, and what did we just read in Luke 24? He said he opened their eyes concerning Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Peter's staying right in Psalms at the moment. Mm -hmm. And he's talking about, they've got 11 of them there. There was 12 of them. And he's already knows, he knows from Psalms that they're supposed to get another one in there. Mm -hmm. so they're supposed to officially bring in a 12th. You're, you're talking about Jude, where Judas, uh, where Judas fell. fell away. So now there's only 11 of them because, of course, Judas betrayed Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, the, um, the, the point I'm trying to make here is that Peter certainly started all of a sudden knowing a lot about Psalms. So I'm thinking, now we're going to say this. I'm not saying this is the only thing he knew, but I'm going to say right here, he sure did learn a lot about Psalms. We'll continue to prove that. Where... Wherefore of these men, which have accompanied with us all the time that, Lord, that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John, until that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. Okay. Anyway, if you finish that chapter, which we're not going to right now, they, they drew lots, they prayed about it, drew lots. The, per, the person had to have been there with them the whole way through, mm -hmm. and uh, the lot fell on uh, Matthew. All right, now we're going to start reading in Acts 2, next chapter, verse 1. Things are getting, things are starting to heat up. We're right here, and things are starting to heat up. In 
amazingly, like one of the most intense things that's ever happened. All right. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. Now, if that happened in this room right now, wow. Okay. And if anybody tells you that that has happened to them, they are lying. Okay. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Can a person wind up speaking in tongues by being filled with the devil? Mm -hmm. I believe that I believe that it can happen. Yeah. All right. But we got men that are we're gonna read about it in much detail. These guys are speaking in other tongues and they are filled with the Holy Ghost. And Spirit of Christ Jesus. And also note it's it's the Holy Spirit that gave them the utterance. It's not yes. some vile spirit, because it's capitalized S. Exactly. Spirit gave the hope, and as the Spirit gave them utterance, and it just said the Holy Ghost, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem. Now, now we need to pick up on these details. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem. Remember, they're at Jerusalem. Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Why is there a bunch of Jews dwelling at Jerusalem from other from every nation under heaven? Well, that's right, and they all made faithful pilgrimages there. Right. And they all knew about the murder of Jesus Christ, and they all thought it was just fine. They thought we're just getting the trash out of the way. So all these men who are Jews who were born and raised with synagogues in other countries, they're always getting to Jerusalem anytime they can. For this feast day, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. They're having and, and they want to they make a pilgrimage anyway. All right. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded. Why was it such a physical manifestation when this Holy Ghost came on these people? It's a sign. You need to get them all rounded up. Everybody's like, what's going on? Are you kidding me? No, that didn't really happen. And then they all join in there and just see what's going on. They're innocent. They don't know anything about this. All right. And the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? They're hearing something that's never been heard before. They're hearing these Galileans, who were not world travelers, and some of these people did not speak they didn't know each other's languages. So what they're doing is they're standing there saying, how can these guys be speaking all these languages at one time? Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> they were all amazed and marveled. Okay. And eight. And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia. Phrygia, Pamphylia, in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya, about Cyrenia, and strangers of Rome, Jews, and proselytes. Who's there at that? Who's there at that gathering? It's either all Jews or proselytes. Jews and proselytes. The strangers of Rome, I believe, were, if you, based on First Peter, were Jews that, that he just was unfamiliar with, but they were still. I, I think so. But why would the Bible give us this whole list of everything? Well, that's many. That's how many languages them guys were speaking at one time. So everybody heard a message very clearly. All right. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. All right, now we're fixing to get into what Peter's going to, his first sermon. All right, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. 
And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay, uh, we're going to be going back to Joel next week quite a bit because we have to talk about a term that's going to come up in Peter and John and Hebrews and Revelations called the last times, the last time. Okay, we're going to discuss that. We have to discuss that. If we're going to talk about what Peter was taught to preach right here and what happened with him and the beginning of Christianity, we have to talk about that term in life. So we'll be turning back to Joel. All right. Let's see, where did I stop? Name of and who, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs. And Jesus came here with many miracles, wonders and signs. John said, the apostle John said that the book couldn't contain all of them. All right. So Jesus was... Um, confirmed amongst these people with miracles that nobody else has ever done or could do, which God did by him in the midst of you as ye you yourselves also know. All these Jews understood what was knew about the things that Jesus Christ had did. They'd heard about all that. They weren't necessarily in the same town with him, but these people went to the synagogues and talked about these things. What was this disturbance in their religion? Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. All right. He is preaching a murder indictment. He's telling them you have murdered him, and he is also telling them these things they have to believe. He's telling them that uh, Jesus Christ raised from the dead. Okay. For David speaketh concerning him. I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, all my flesh shall rest in hope. Peter is, is back at Psalms again. Where am I going? I'm in Acts 2. I got a lot of reading to do. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Once again, I want to point out that Peter knows an awful lot about Psalms all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Now, um, as you know, we're, I'll just say that. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, wherein we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this which ye now see and hear. Okay. He told them this, is, this, this was uh, the promise of the Holy Ghost. He hath shed forth this which ye now see and hear. Back Talking about back the tongues and all they were speaking. Yes, and oh, by the way, if you don't know it, Yet, uh, Peter is still speaking in tongues. Okay, because all these people are the ones that are hearing. So these guys are all speaking in tongues right now. He might have been speaking three languages at one time. For David is not ascended into the heavens. 
But he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand. All right, here's how that works. The Lord said unto my Lord, when he says my Lord, there he's talking about Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. his Lord. Mm -hmm. Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and said unto Peter, and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? All right, some of them were, there were a lot of people standing there that realized that Peter was telling them the truth, and it, 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 they were like, man, this we is hard. We made a bad mistake. Mm -hmm. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What did we just read in Luke 24? All right, so Peter's doing his job. He hasn't said anything about Jesus Christ dying for their sins yet. Does that mean he doesn't know about that? No, it doesn't. How could he possibly take the entire book of First and Second Peter and First, Second, and Third John and Hebrews and teach these people in one hour? I mean, or in in one day. Mm -hmm. Okay, but he's definitely giving them some information which Jesus Christ did tell him to give them. All right. Then I'm going to read it again, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, repent of your sins. You've got to know you're a sinner to come to Christ. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So, what was a brand new Christian going to, what were they going to do right then? If that's all they heard from Peter, what were they going to do right then that day? Exactly. They were, going to look, they were going to look there and think, I'm, I'm a sinner. I've messed up real bad. They were going to go get baptized, no matter who was laughing at them or who shot them or told them they couldn't come home to the family or what have you. And then what was going to happen? The Holy Ghost was going to come on them, and there would be a physical manifestation of that. Guess what? Yep. On that day, that brand new Christian didn't know anything but that Jesus Christ was the Son of God right. and that we had killed him and then that they, the Holy Ghost came on him. And by getting baptized, it was for the remission of sins and it, and because all the masses of the Jews are who killed Jesus. So it was saying, I, I, boy, I admit my st mistake. I stand separate now. Mm -hmm. and, um, yep, that's right. And uh, do you think that those people possibly learned a bunch of other stuff over the next few years? I'm going to talk to you about how it worked. So you're, so you're saying you're not sure yet that if, if, if Jesus explained to them the blood atonement, although they're not preaching it here. We're going to get, we're going to, get sure. to it. I, okay. I wanted to okay. pose that question, and then I want to tell you some thoughts on okay. that. Good. But it's going, to take us a, it's going to take more than one night to do that. Okay. All right. But first... We need to establish that Peter's coming straight out of Psalms and that he does know a lot about the Psalms. Like, I mean, he's, Peter was, he was, you know, blinded. Things were kept from him before the cross. And now Peter's speaking with authority about the prophets. But he's staying in Psalms mm -hmm. so far. Okay. Um, he's also, he's also gone to Joel, though. Mm -hmm. We got to pick that up later when we start start talking about the last times. All right, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, "Save yourselves from this untoward generation." Untoward means unmanageable. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Then they that were gladly. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So about 3,000 people came to believe at that point. Mm -hmm. that's, pretty, that's, that's some pretty stout preaching. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. You missed 42. Oh, I'm sorry. I think it helps with our thought. Yes, it does. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, their doctrine, and fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. 
So what I'm guessing is that in the days to come, these guys learned a lot more than what they just dealt with in verse 37 and 38. Because they were in prayer, they were gathered with the apostles, they all stayed together, and they were all working on uh, learning and developing and growing. Because that's what humans do. All right. And, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common. Seems impossible for the whole world to live that way, doesn't it? But so far, we got about 3,000 people living that way. Guess where they gathered up every day? At the temple. At the temple. And uh, you, can, you can bet. Now, remember the question I posed. You can bet that Peter taught them a lot that he learned here. He, taught, he didn't just keep telling them that. 37 and 38 over and over again. All right. The Jews also in the temple at the time? Uh, yeah, there were fights. That's uh, Peter got in prison, beaten half to death, all kind of stuff. I mean, they're in the temple, but they're sharing the temple with the people who don't believe he was inside. So. Well, they, they were Jews. Exactly, they were. They absolutely were. They had the right to go into the temple. And people were coming around to the temples. Jews had a lot of discussions in there. And it was a meeting place, and people who had something to say that were Jewish, they went in there with Jews. You couldn't go in there, and um, uh, well, you could if you were, you know, if you were uh, worshiping the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If you were a proselyte, but other than that, it was a Jewish situation. I remember the head Pharisees ran, got jealous of all this, and ran them out of there. But they so, couldn't just. They didn't have the right to just go in there and just slaughter them. But they tried their best to... Remember, they told told him, Peter and John, to stop all this. And yes. they found them again in the temple doing it, right? And that's when they imprisoned them. Is that right? Yes, and we have to read that sermon, too. But that is odd, because the Pharisee Jews were in there playing their right. religious look at me. Right. And they're, these guys yeah. are like, oh, no, Jesus is Messiah. And they're like, Get, shut those guys up. You know? right. So you got all kind of stuff going on at once. It's just one. It's kind of, well, it's similar today. you got people, some people trying to figure out the truth and some playing religious games. All right. Sounds good. I'm going to talk myself out of a job here in a minute. I'm reading so fast. We're in Acts 3. <clears throat> well, you're still in 2. You didn't finish 45. I didn't? Yeah, you 45. Okay, yeah, I thought I did. And so, all right, they had everything in common and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men as every man had need. Boy, that's, you know, that's a, that's a hardcore thing to become a believer and, and literally be so inspired by that, that you're literally selling all your God and sharing it with your fellow believers <clears throat> and spending all your time in prayer and uh, learning and witnessing amazing signs and wonders done by the apostles. I guess it would affect you too if you saw some of the things that Peter did. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. Breaking bread often means a discussion. Okay? So they had to be learning new things. And Peter was and John were the main teachers. So remember keeping that question in mind about mm -hmm. How much was revealed to him immediately in 40 days? Anyway, breaking bread from house to house and eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Okay? Now we're going to go to 3 and we're going to start in verse 12. Now, the, in the first part of the chapter, I'm sure you're very familiar with the story. Peter and John go up to the temple, and there's a lame man there that can't walk. And he asked him for some money. He's a beggar. And Peter told him, he said, silver and gold have I none. Who can finish it? Brady, guys. <laughs> yeah. So they, uh, Peter healed... A lame man. That's a that's a miracle. Okay. In the spirit of rightly dividing, you have never seen a miracle. 
and I've never seen a miracle, and I can't do one, and neither can you. Okay? And if I pray for you when you're sick, and God answers my prayers, that is not a miracle. Okay? That is an act of God, but it's not a miracle. So a miracle was for signs and for wonders, and Peter, a man that couldn't even walk, Okay, above the age of 40, getting brand new legs. All right. There's a bunch of Jews standing around and saw that happen. Now, verse 12. And, uh, wait a minute. We'll start in 11. And as the lame man, which was healed, held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. I wonder why they would mention Solomon's porch right there. Think about that. All right. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up, and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. Murder indictment once again. The sermons start with the murder indictment. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, okay, don't ever want to change the name, and his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I would that through ignorance you did it, as did also your rulers. All right? He said you were ignorant. You didn't know it was Jesus Christ, the Son of God. All right? But I'm about to explain it to you. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. Now he says that he he's perfectly understands the prophet saying that Christ should suffer. Once again, he has not said anything about, uh, Peter hasn't said anything about why he suffered. Okay, he's just telling them, you murdered him. And the prophet said you were going to murder him. All right. He said that, that Christ should suffer, comma, he hath so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refresh, refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. This is a different gospel than the one by which I got saved. Because my sins have already been blotted out. Mm -hmm. These people, and we'll have to talk about it further in our rightly dividing. We have to talk about it further as we go through Acts. We can't talk about everything at one night. But these people, he said, if you repent, you have to stay in a, a, a state of repentance. And your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you whom the heavens must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. He's mentioning prophets, but he, he starts going into Psalms. And, the, and it looks like they didn't, they, the, the gist is they thought the presence of the Lord, his return may not be that far away because Peter acknowledged they were in the last days. Well, we're, so. we're, we're not going to get to last times tonight, okay? but we're going to get into a heavy discussion about last times, which you can't discuss this. You can't discuss Peter's gospel mm -hmm. that he was given without discussing the last times. Okay? okay. Right. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you, of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Who's telling them what, who, who's giving them this information? Ye shall hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. Peter is telling them what he says unto them. All 
right? Keep that in mind. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, In thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. <clears throat> unto you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you uh, from his iniquities. That's remission. Turning away from your iniquities is the remission. All right. Now notice that Peter is telling all this to Jews. All right. And he says unto you first, but before that, he said, and in all thy seed shall all the kindred of the earth be blessed. Peter knows a lot, man. He's, he knows, he, he learned a lot of things back here. Cause, yeah, because Moses is the one that said that in chapter, and in Genesis, way back in 12. Yeah, ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first, God having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away everyone from his iniquities. Once again, he has not said anything about Jesus Christ dying for sins. Mm -hmm. All right. But, man, Peter learned a lot in those 40 days. Mm -hmm. We'll continue discussing it. 26, Prophets, Moses. So, Peter talked mostly to these people out of Psalms. His deepest, his, his intense statements concerning Psalms in that first sermon pulled most of his information from Psalms. I want you to keep that in mind. And then uh, let's go to, let's go to the book of John. Gospel of John. Maybe. Yes, Gospel of John. All right, Jesus is feeding his disciples some food. He's helped them catch some fish right before that. This is after the, the death and the resurrection and uh, shortly before the ascension. What chapter? Oh, we're in, the lap, we're in chapter 21 of the Gospel of John. We'll start with verse 15. <clears throat> So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Okay. Now, now we're going to talk about, we're going to, I want you to remember this verse for next week. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. Whose death? Peter's. Okay? He's talking about Peter's death there. The last times of Peter. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, follow me. Okay. All right. So Peter was directed to feed. He was very clearly directed to feed the lost sheep of the tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. That's what Peter's uh, <clears throat> thing was. But there in Acts, we realized that he understood some things that Abraham said in Genesis. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that. So concerning, concerning the, the whole question here that we're getting to, what all did Jesus Christ, did they, did these guys know on the day of Pentecost? 
How much of it did they know? Remember what our question was. He said that they might understand the scriptures. All right. They had some understanding to go for the rest of their lives. But we've, we've looked at real exacting what Peter said on the day of Pentecost and his next sermon in the temple. So we know that he knew quite a bit. And uh, next week we'll continue uh, delving into exactly what he did know. Exactly all that he knew. And how much of it, of the things that he knew, and Peter knew all kind of things the day he died. He could have witnessed to me and you or anybody else. Um, he actually learned to get along with the Apostle Paul, although he had some awkward moments in the beginning. But uh, Peter learned a lot here, too. And could it be, I'm going to ask the question again. Could it be that Peter learned all kind of good stuff in the 40 days? And his eyes were opened though, so that he could learn more mm -hmm. as he went. That's the question. And versus, versus he just learned it all at that point. Yeah. Yes, did Peter in 40 days learn everything he wrote in First and Second Peter's, Peter, and did John, who was right there beside him, did John learn everything he wrote in First, Second, and Third John in 40 days? Or did I'm not saying learn, he didn't. Or did they learn as they went on through yes. the Acts period? Did they begin to learn here with their eyes open? They were no longer blinded. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you know they studied the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And you know Jesus Christ taught them a lot about the scriptures in that 40 days. Mm -hmm. We've already got evidence of that. But did they know 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John? Did they know Hebrews? And did they know 1st and 2nd Peter mm -hmm. in, in 40 days? Mm -hmm. So that's the question. All right. Signs and wonders, speaking in tongues, and baptized with the Holy Ghost. You cannot tell me that that's my gospel. You can't do it. But it's there for my learning and for my information. And we can help learn. people who are who are hung up in misunderstanding. The more we learn about it, the more we can help them. So we've got a long way to be way saved. To go. Yeah. Learn to be saved. Yep. All right. Great purpose and application. I appreciate it. All right, good deal. We're uh, I finished reading to you um, a little bit early tonight. Didn't I talk myself out of a job? And uh, next week we're going to tackle uh, what Peter wrote. We're going to tackle what John wrote, and we're going to get into Hebrews. And part of that discussion is absolutely going to involve the last times mm -hmm. okay, that they kept mentioning and talking about. So, if you want to do something real beneficial to yourself between now and next Sunday, uh, read First and Second Peter. It's a short read. Mm -hmm. Read First, Second, and Third John, mm -hmm. or you might tackle Hebrews. Hebrews is very thick; it takes a long time to read, and I don't mean thick like this. Mm -hmm. I mean it's, there's a lot of information in Hebrews, and it mm -hmm. can get pretty complex. But those are the three things we're going to be talking about. And, of course, we're going to be turning to other scripture in Acts. And this is all about getting started with the book of Acts. Because that's what Acts is, is the beginning of Christianity. So if we don't know what Peter was teaching people when he got started teaching people, we're going to stagger and stumble the rest of the way through Acts. Because we got a long way to go. All right. Thank you.